Uh, hello, I'm going to show you Willow. Uh, in fact, some part of Willow. But first, who am I? Uh, my name is Gabriel Cotelli. I'm coming here from Argentina. Um, I work in Smalltalk Science 2004. I work at Melkop Software. So, okay. This is the agenda for, for today. Uh, we are show us some intro, some components, and the interactive part that is uh, most interesting. Okay, first of all, what is Willow? Uh, Willow is a web interaction library that makes it easy to use Ajax based, to create Ajax based web applications. Okay, and it has an ecosystem of related projects, so Willow is the core project, and then you have Bootstrap integration, Semantic UI integration, jQuery UI integration, uh, Mixpanel, for, well, Mixpanel is a library for tracking events, so you can track what the user is doing the app uh, to optimize it, and a little more tiny libraries. Okay, and why Willow? Uh, we started making web applications for our products, I don't know, four or five years ago, uh, we started with plain seaside, but uh, there were some things that we don't like, like when you learn that do a submit, it will do a full page refresh, so it is no noticeable for the user. Uh, or, for example, the user tend to copy the URL and it has the stack keys, so you pass it to another user and it confuses everyone. So we started using a lot more Ajax code and rendering only parts of the document model. Okay, uh, it ends up writing like JavaScript spaghetti. Okay, I took that piece of code from the Seaside menu list. It's a classical thing that people ask. Okay, if you see it, it's just doing a, when you click the button, it will do an Ajax call do something on the server, and in the case that the setup bot check debug don't give an error, if you give an error, it will open a dialog. Okay. This is the way that you write the same code in Willow. Okay. You ask if the component supplier for something that can be clicked, an anchor or a button, we will see later better that. And you say, on trigger, I will evaluate that on the server, so the same code we have before. On error, when you return, open the dialog. Okay? This is the original code. This is how you write it in Willow. Okay. First, we'll re we review the features, the main features. Okay? We will provide ready to use components. Uh, interactive components, so you can give, say, give me a button, give me an input, give me a, a list, a table, and you can use it to interact easily using Ajax calls. Uh, it has it have an abstraction uh, for the front -end framework that you are using, because at the beginning we don't have that, and we started using Bootstrap 2. And uh, one day we will say, oh, okay, just we are ready to boost up free. And you have to touch all the things because the integration was split for over the code base. So now if you want some Willow component, you say, okay, for the component supplier, give me a button. If I have installed Bootstrap, I get a Bootstrap button with the style of Bootstrap. If I have semantic UI, I get semantic UI button. Okay? So in a way, it's, it's a trap. It's not perfect because sometimes you want to change some style or add something, but it's a great step in easier to change from one Fermaton framework to another. And the third characteristic is that it's compatible with Seaside. Okay? It's built on top of Seaside. You can mix Seaside code, Seaside rendering code with real components and everything which has worked. Okay. This is a brief list of the more important components that are provided out of the box. Okay, you have fields for text, date, 
number field. For example, the date fields in Bootstrap will open uh, some dialogue so you can choose the date. You don't have to type it in each HTML file in the browser that support it. This will have also the pop up. Okay, there are selection components like list box, drop box, drop down list, radios, checkbox. Uh, components for common input, like buttons, links, or drop-down menus. Okay, containers, lists, tables, grids, dialogues, panels. So miscellaneous, like images, identified views are a really useful component because when you want to render some other part of the document model, you always need that this have an ID. So, this component just renders another thing and it ensures that they will have an ID. So we can ask it an ID later and use it in the interactions. And there is also some advanced components like a periodical render view. So you have a component that you say, okay, show me that and every five minutes refresh it. Okay, so you will have a dashboard, you should use a have a little box and Every five minutes, it will go to the server and refresh the contents. And you have to do it, it's pretty automatic. Okay, but now the most interesting part, I think, is the interaction of parentheses. Okay, each component that I show has uh, understood the on trigger message, and this will give you access to the interactive affordances that the framework provides. Okay, so we'll start with the most ugly affordance, but this is used in another more uh, upper level. Okay, this will just do some ugly JavaScript. Okay, this will not go to the server, but it will uh, let us introduce the framework. Okay, this is what will happen with this code. Okay. This code say, say button and trigger, execute on client, and show me an alert. So when I click it, I will get an alert. Okay. And now this is the what the browser gets. Okay, the on trigger file look with on trigger do, it binds in that case in the button it's a click event. If I have an input it will be a change event, if I have another thing, maybe it's another event. Uh, it binds an event with the function that will be generated for all the interactions I will do. Okay, I, here I am doing just one interaction, so we just shall go. So let's start with the interesting ones. Okay, this is for server evaluation. So now I'm here, okay, button and trigger, evaluate that callback on the server. Okay. This is what happens, it's the standard. Now, this is the code that we get, okay? We know call server is just a wrapper over the standard Ajax uh, function because there are some things that we always want to do the same way. So to not repeat it, everything we have it abstracted, but it's an Ajax code, okay? And the response is not important in this case because I shall say, evaluate and do nothing. Okay, now another. Uh, this is very common to use. Okay, the first part, the first part you have an identifier web view. Okay, I, I am giving it the name, so you, when they generate ID, it would say companion ID blah blah blah. So if you have a problem and need to go and look to the DOM, it's easier to find that thing in the very few number of things you have, okay? And this is just rendering strong with the current time. Okay, so I'm saying button on trigger, render this view. We will, what thing will do, is when I click the button, it will go to the server, get a new rendering, and come back and render that in place, replacing the previous rendering. Okay, this is what happened. When I click it, go to the server, perform the, in that case, the rendering of the current time, and come back. So here the difference 
it's also an Asian skull, but the difference is we have ah, it's not okay. If we can see the part, the response is just just with code that say okay, locate that content ID blah 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 and replace it with that. Okay, uh, another thing. When you have elements in a form, where if you want that the values that the user types go to the server, you have to serialize it. The standard way is when it's a big button, but this will full render all the page, and we don't want that. So we are doing it with HACs. And we have several affordances for that. You can say, okay, serialize it. So I can, for example, have an input and say input and trigger, serialize it. I will serialize only that input, or I can say serialize the container form, and this will find the form that contains the button in that case, and we will serialize all. Okay, so here we have an, an example. This is a more complex one because we are doing several things, but I say, okay, button and trigger, serialize container form, disable me, okay, this will disable the button. And evaluate that. And in that case, the Ask developer will just open something in Faro, I will type, and when the response go back, replace the input value with my answer. Okay, this is what will happen. Okay, it's, we need to that start again. Okay, so I enter something here. When I click it, the button will get disabled, will go to the server, will ask me something, I will respond, and when it's okay, it's back, it will replace the content. Okay. And usually you don't do interaction, manual interaction with the server, but it's just to illustrate. Okay, and what's changed? The Ajax code it's converted to a post type. Because if you have a hue firm, what tends to happen is that it not enter in the query parameters. So for us, it's easier to always do a post. And in the slow part, you see that it finds the closest form and serializes all the inputs. Okay, these are a list of another affordances I will not enter in detail. But you can manipulate the document parts. Okay, you can disable, enable, get focus, remove something, change some part for another. Uh, for example, the show renderable while calling the server. It's really useful because you can say, okay, show this spinner, this spinner while calling the server to in when you are back, render again a new view. Okay, there's also some affordances to. Uh, manipulate CSS classes. And there is also support for dialogues. Okay, uh, what we do with dialogues is uh, the Willow applications always have a special section where the dialogues are. So when you open one, it will go in that part of the document model. And when you, it, by default, it's configured that when you close it, it will destroy it. Okay, so they find it and destroy it. You can, it's possible to have only one dialogue and reuse it. But in our case, it was simply easier to recreate the new dialogue every time. Okay. Until now, we're using isolated commands. We use just one or two. Now we are going to see some real life samples. Okay, this example is we have a toolbar and we say, okay, on run selected test trigger, transform this component that is showing a test result, show me some bouncing balls, evaluate that on the server, in that case we will run the test, and render back the result. Okay, and the on, run, on run selected test trigger is just saying to the corresponding button on trigger. So we have some tests, I click it, this will be placed with a spinner, go to the server, I render back the results. Okay. 
This is the goal. Transform the test result, that is the standard green bar. Show me the bone symbols, go to the server, run the test, and when you're ready, go back and run it again, the results. Okay, this is an example of opening a dialog. This is a, a, a link that will appear. Okay, and so uh, to the component supplier, I say, okay, give me some link with the label see the details. And to the link, I say, okay, on trigger, open that dialog. And this dialog class is just the standard CSI component that will render the dialog. Okay, so when I click the link, this will go to the server and bring me back the dialog where they update the results. So far, so good? Okay, this is a tricky one. Uh, we have two things here. Okay, the first one, uh, sent to Mixpanel, is just, uh, it's provided by one of the additional libraries, and when the user clicks the button, it will use the Mixpanel integration and search an event and say, okay, the user click that, in that case, search analyze. Uh, but the interesting part is the second one, because until now we are used doing always something. So in that case, we want to do different things depending on the server state, okay? So when the user will click the, the button, it will say, okay, I have some application context, this is server state. If you have a bond and an analysis, when, and the response, when you return, open the, the dialogue showing that. If you don't have a bond and analysis, don't do nothing, okay? So, I am here typing, so now I have something, when I click it, it open the dialog, but if I don't signal anything, when I click it, nothing will happen. Okay, and this is just, this is just some syntax issue uh, to not have to type exit on client and some ugly stuff, okay? Well, now we will see some more complex interactions and crazy stuff. 90% uh, of the time you end up using the other ones, but sometimes you want to do some crazy things. So I will see it. Okay, so here we have an example that it's doing an evaluate, but I need information that it's in the browser. Okay, so I say evaluate will and I need to pass that information with the callback. So, we we'll create an, well, in that case, a web interaction interpreter, okay, for instant evaluation. This will be, a, when it's applied, and the page is rendered, it will automatically execute. When the page ends up rendering, it will execute that function, okay? And we'll do an HX call, evaluate the callback, and, uh, part that is in the width, in that case I simplify the, the, the example, but it's getting the user agent string, okay? This, usually it will come in a request, but this could be any piece of JavaScript that you need. So in that case, this will get serialized in the agent's call, so the, uh, you will... Okay, so... This thing gets serialized, and when the callback is in the server, here, in that argument, you will have the thing that you serialize here. Okay? Okay. Other crazy things that you can do. Uh, we have, for example, a uh, high charts GS integration, okay? And it provides some CS objects, for the people that know CSI, if you are doing bindings against JavaScript libraries, you usually end up subclassing so CS object. So here we have that high charge plot options, scatter events, okay? And they have a click method that expects, expects a JavaScript function. If I want to use it directly, I have to write something that creates a JavaScript function. And it tends to be added. So we can 
even if the framework doesn't have a window integration in place, we can do it more or less by hand, okay? So I say, okay, create me a web interaction interpreter for the click. And then you can configure that interpreter like you will do with the trigger. But I can say render, I can say uh, evaluate, I can say everything we can do with the standard on trigger. So in that case I'm saying, okay, set the bound and analysis to this thing, and when the response is back, open me a diagram, okay? So the last part you have to do is just to, okay, you have to apply the interpreter to the shears option. This is what the standard window components do in the inner part, okay? But you can use it externally if you don't have an integration. And, well, this is what you get, okay? This chart on the right, it's using high charts uh, binding, and when you click in some button representing the bond in the curve, it will open the dial. If you see the network and inspect the packages, the, there is a lot, a lot of JavaScript behind, but you don't have to write it. Okay. Uh, I don't know how I in time I'm okay. going. Okay, I will show some videos. a project called Willow Playground that includes uh, the presentation we did the last year in the Argentinian conference and two sample applications. So if you want to start, you have some real applications, easy real applications to get to use as example. Okay. This is a web version of the Terranet. Okay, this is connected to the Faro image that I have when I have running, so I can select some tests, okay, here we go, I can select some tests, this, will, this is rendering into part, and select what I want to, to run, okay, when I say run, this goes to the server, runs, here we have the reset, I can see the details, okay, in that case everything was okay, so I think that some things are failing, maybe, alright, okay, well, if you have failing test, here will be a list of the test data frame. You can also run a profile, so you get a message tiling, and you can download it. Okay, this is a really simple application. All the interaction is made using Willow. If you see the URL, you notice that the user don't see the session and key uh, or the, that crazy stuff that you tend to copy and paste in another place. Okay. This is another one. It's some kind of light dog. Okay, so you can select the package, select the class, and get the class comment, the hierarchy, okay, the definition, methods. Okay, this is using a bit, a really bit of components and interactions. So we made that application to be used as examples. Okay, uh, what else? Okay, I'll show you something else. Okay, here we have something. Um, 
This is, for example, the periodical radar component. Okay. And to do to use it, you just I think that I expect that it's well, more or less coming soon. But to say okay, periodical radar web view, evaluate that every one thousand milliseconds. Then render in that case the current time. And you can also have a condition, so you can do that until some condition is met. Okay? So it's really simple to do that, and it will keep calling the server and rendering back, calling the server and rendering back. Okay. Okay. Uh, if there is time, I have some videos for real applications, but maybe after the talk, if anyone is interested, we can see it. Okay. Let me move it. This is an application we were working in the last year. It's a financial product. So you can... Okay. More or less, you can see it. So here you have a bunker. Okay. This, is, this video was uh, taped when Argentinian models are okay. Now the curve is inverted. <laughs> but, well, it's useful to know it. Uh, so you can click something, it will open, uh, in that case, a dialog, and you go to a specific analysis tool for this bond. Okay. They show you some statistics. You can do sensitivity analysis, and this will change the graphics and the table. You have some standard info on the bond. Okay. Uh, what we pay, when, the dates. You can see uh, the code chart and the internal rate of return chart. You can compare. Okay, you can select several bonds and compare it. You get a table to do the comparison. Um, you have uh, some kind of calendar of the next payments of the things that are your favorites. Okay. So this is a, a commercial product. We are still figuring out the business model back. It's deployed. And by the way, this is in production using Docker in a really close way that Marcus showed the other day. Yes, totally, it's possible. Uh, right now, every component has some certain type of events already implemented, but if you have, if you can write and say, okay, in Java, this is a web app, but if in Java script there is an event for that kind of thing, you can do it easily. Yeah, we don't have Madrid support. Uh, in our most uh, big applications, we have something that makes it really easy to do the kind of uh, grab stuff. Uh, we are going to open source it, but it, need, it needs some work still. Uh, it's in our program. But uh, we are running VIS Motor and Far. So, we need that uh, the things work in both places. 
Yes. Do you support all browsers? Do you support all browsers? No. It, well, it depends on what you are using. For example, uh, this version of Booster that is integrated is Booster 3, and it works even in Internet Explorer 8. I think that some banks still have Internet Explorer 8. Um, they are using it. We have to do a lot of stuff to get it working <laughs> on that one browser. But the, the basic interaction, the JavaScript interaction is on the jQuery, so jQuery abstracts away a lot of difference of the browsers. And uh, the funny stuff is that, um, in fact, the real users don't use the uh, internet per date, but the technical people testing it use it, and the user use Chrome. Yes? Uh, as a company I work at, we used a lot of Ajax, and we had some uh, problems the customers uh, had. Uh, with the back button of the, the browser. Yes. Do you have some uh, things to manage that? But you don't have a back button here because it never changes the page. Yeah, but we say that to the user, but they, they still want to, to work in some way. But uh, no. I was just wondering. We just say you don't have a back button. Okay. It's an application, not a web page. Some places have a back button, but embedded in the application. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going, if the workflow makes sense, we say, okay, I go from here, from here, and come, go back, but not use the browser. Yes. This is what I wanted to ask. Do you have already something to manage this kind of thing, even if it's not the back button from the browser, but do you have some support to have another kind of back button in the application? Yes, for example, this application, when you start it, you have a drop down to select a curve, and you click it and it changes some part to show you the curve, and you have a link like a breadcrumb, so you click on that, you will go back. Okay, it's some kind of uh, back button, but contextually for the relation. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> How is it? Uh, it's seaside compatible. Yes. But it's not on top of seaside. It's built on top of seaside. On top of seaside. Yes. Uh, it will not load everything from seaside. We tried. It's, it was not so easy to to break the parts that we don't want to load because we don't need it. But you can mix a seaside code with that. But if you want to use the interactive part, you need to use the real components. But the rendering can say HTML, D, blah, 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 and render is a real component. Right now we have two committers that do not commit, that 
that's who completely dead from the perspective of the community this is awful so that's just my point so what I wanted to know is that do you have the right to add uh, to add them to the admin of this website of this uh, for for C uh, the of C -side? yes um, why does so it look there if you look at the inside at activity you see comment activity if you look at the issue tracker you see issue activity and if you look at okay, the so let's not do anything, activity. sorry okay, perfect, sorry, my mistake well, are you really convinced? <laughs> <laughs> let's keep talking Okay, I want to thank you, Maxi Talarman, because he started this project in 2013. Uh, he have a commercial product, but it's for a very, very niche product. It's for Rolling Master people that plays Rolling Master. I just all I, that I know, but it's a cool app because uh, they have some kind of combat mode, so you, the interactions are really interesting in that obligation. Okay, uh, my company for paying the trip, so I can be here today, and uh, develop a team of Mercap because everyone, we are 20 people, I think that at least 15 people are using that, and for the newbies, when you have one new contract, when we hire something new, they got start using that in, I don't know, two weeks, without knowing anything about Ajax, about uh, HTML, it's, it's pretty good. Um, we have some external collaborators and people using it that are bringing ideas and even doing some comments. So thank you to them. Okay. <laughs> I'm